Today on the caucus, Mark Landler on President Obama. The president, once again, is turning his focus to jobs. Also, Jeff Zeleny takes a closer look at the votes behind the just passed debt deal. There's some clues in there about the contours of the 2012 race. We've got to do everything in our power to grow this economy and put America back to work. That's what I intend to do, and I'm looking forward to working with Congress to make it happen. President Obama signed the debt ceiling legislation yesterday and turned immediately back to politics uh, toward job creation and reviving the economy. Uh, today he's headed to Chicago for a Democratic fundraiser. I'll be going with him. And it's an opportunity for him to reconnect with the Democratic base after a negotiation that many Democrats viewed as damaging Democratic interests with its heavy focus on government spending cuts. In another week, he heads out on a rare presidential bus tour through the Midwest, which will allow him again to focus on reviving the economy and win back perhaps the affections of independent voters who've grown somewhat uh, disillusioned in the past couple of years. These are key electoral battleground states. They're places where the Republican candidates have already been out pounding away at a message of President Obama's failure to revive the economy. It is about the, by some people's count, the eighth or ninth time that President Obama has pivoted back to job growth. So it's not clear how effective it will be. The problem for the president is that there may not be that many policy options to back up the political message. But White House officials acknowledge there isn't a great deal that he can do on the policy front that he hasn't already tried to try to encourage companies to hire more workers, to get consumers to spend money, and to get the economy moving again. So a busy time for the president, a much more political time than the wrangling and the, uh, the, the beltway politics of the last month. In every session of Congress, a handful of votes on key pieces of legislation have a long shelf life. Health care, for example, or bailing out financial institutions. It remains to be seen whether the vote this week on the debt ceiling compromise will be won. While it passed with strong majorities, the bases of both political parties seem skeptical. The roll call vote in the Senate was interesting for Republicans who are up for re-election next year. Senator Richard Lugar of Indiana and Senator Orrin Hatch of Utah are both facing stiff primary challenges from the right. But they voted differently. Senator Lugar voted yes, Senator Hatch no. This shows a different approach to their similar re-election challenges. Senator Lugar has taken steps to push back against his Tea Party challenger, but Senator Hatch is trying to attach himself to the movement. Both races will be ones to watch. In the House, when you take a closer look at the Tea Party, not all of the freshman members who identify themselves with the movement have voted the same way. Bobby Schilling of Illinois, for example, voted yes, as did Alan West of Florida. But Ben Quayle of Arizona voted no, as did Joe Walsh, also of Illinois. Will members who voted yes have a tougher time getting through the primary seasons than ones who voted no? The answer to that question will tell us a lot about the potency of this vote in the 2012 campaign. State by state, there was a similar voting pattern from two very different places. In South Carolina, for example, the entire Republican delegation, as well as the state's two senators, voted no. And in Massachusetts, Barney Frank and seven of the ten House Democrats also voted no. It was a rare moment of unification, but for far different reasons, between the liberal and conservative sides of the political spectrum. All of these districts are generally safe, meaning primary challenges are much more likely than general election ones. But the roll call votes from these two states highlight a bigger trend. Many on the left and the right came to the conclusion that the safest vote was no.